Daisy Ridley is speaking about her upcoming Star Wars film with director Charmaine Obeyed Chinoy, and she has a lot to say. First, she says that the entire deal was put together last minute. She says that the film will take the entire franchise in a different direction. And then she also has some things to say about fans. Before we get into this, I'd like to ask you, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos here at The Trent Report. With that out of the way, I wrote this up over at thatparkplace.com. Why have you not bookmarked this site yet? But let's get into this here. She spoke with Alo Cine. I believe that is how you say that. I probably butchered it, though. But uh, I assume that's a French outlet. And uh, she spoke about her plans for the Star Wars film that she has coming up with Charmaine obey Chinoy. Let's listen to exactly what she had to say here. Um, yes, that was actually um, quite last minute. I was actually making my own film last year and uh, Kathy Kennedy said she wanted to have uh, breakfast and I thought we were just having breakfast. So I was literally eating my breakfast and she said, oh, we might do another one. I was like, okay. So I thought about so there you have it. She's saying that the whole thing was put together at the very last minute. She was approached over breakfast. She thought she was just having breakfast. And Kathleen Kennedy is pitching her a Star Wars film uh, over breakfast. And uh, she goes on to say how she thought about it. And uh, she thinks it's a really fantastic exploration of the Star Wars world. But let's listen to what she has to say rather than you listening to me, what she has to say. But I do think it is revealing that uh, this was all put together very last minute. Sounds like it is rushed. Maybe they don't really have a plan. She says they have a story already in place, but uh, one would expect it. It's got to be changing. The fact that uh, it's not the first film that will be going into production, uh, I think, is very telling. We also saw Damon Lindelhoff already kind of be removed from it, and one would think that that was the actual uh, movie she was pitched previously because he was indeed working on it for at least six months uh, before they made that announcement that Charmino Bechinoy would be taking over, and Lindelhoff was out. So I definitely think there's some problems here in the development and uh, it's not surprising. It's Lucasfilm. They're always having problems and development. And usually it, uh, it ensures that the product is absolutely trash. Uh, you can just look at that with like solo. You can look at that with the sequel trilogy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but let's listen to what else Daisy Ridley had to say here. But for a little bit, once I knew what the story was and everything, I knew that it was something I really wanted to do. I think it's a really fantastic uh, exploration of the Star Wars world. It's a really cool way of taking the story on in a bit of a different direction. It was very strange. So she's claiming that the story will be taken in a different direction uh, based on everything we've seen from this film that'll be taking 15 years after uh, the rise of Skywalker and that she will be raising a Padawan or at least forming a Jedi Academy. It sounds like this is stuff that they've already done. They did this with Luke Skywalker in the Expanded Universe, and they're basically just aping a lot of that, giving it to Daisy Ridley to do, and having her replace Luke Skywalker as the character that does all this. And it continues basically what they did with uh, Daisy Ridley in The Rise of Skywalker, where she is all the Jedi, uh, etc., which was just absolutely cringe and stupid. Uh, so I, I have zero uh, hope for this film. I think this film is going to be an utter disaster. I'm not really sure who would be interested in this. Uh, but she also went on and had some uh, things to say about, about fans. Uh, she's specifically talking about her appearance at Star Wars Celebration. She says it was wonderful. And the thing about those conventions are everyone is really lovely and everyone's really lovely to each other. And I think a lot of time people online sort of make out there as discourse or whatever it is that actually isn't shared by a lot of people. And my experience has always been very welcomed. People have been very kind, even if they wanted the story to go here or there or everywhere. It's always a conversation that is respectful. So I, I, I think she is probably right people are probably respectful at those conventions you probably don't see a lot of uh that stuff happening i'm sure people are still uh sharing their distaste for some of that stuff i'm not sure how many of people uh that would be sharing distaste of disney star wars would be showing up at disney star wars conventions anymore though um so I, so maybe that is a reason for that but uh, i definitely think people have expressed their distaste for the disney star wars trilogies i think that's abundantly clear uh the big problem they have now is people are indeed just tuning out and they just don't even care about star wars anymore uh, they're not even hate watching it. You can see that with the declines on uh, Disney Plus. We saw uh, Mandalorian 
Season three having declined from Mandalorian season two, we saw Ahsoka perform worse than Andor in their season finale. And those shows were coming out when, uh, when they had more subscribers on Disney plus indicating they should have more people actually watching, but less people were indeed watching. You can see the declines in the Disney sequel trilogy at the box office returns for each film, huge, huge declines, uh, film over film. And then obviously you can also look at ticket sales. Those were down as well. And then you have the big, the big, the big one is solo actually lost money for them uh, at the box office. So, and obviously that was a reaction. I think a big reaction to the last Jedi. No one wanted to go see what Disney was putting out after uh, the last Jedi and what they did to the star Wars franchise. But none of what really has to say is really surprising. Uh, we've kind of, uh, expected this. Uh, we had Kathleen Kennedy basically reveal to us uh, back last year, uh, I think in an interview post Star Wars Celebration, talking about how they were going to go in a different direction from what George Lucas created. She says, I think what's always great about Star Wars is it's a big galaxy and we're coming off what was a major war with the First Order. And now Ray has made a promise to Luke and that's really the core of where we're going and what this story will be. And I think it offers just tremendous opportunity to introduce new characters and start with something fresh because we culminated with what George Lucas was creating. And now we take all of that and move it to the next chapter. So they're saying that uh, we're done with what George Lucas has created and we're moving on to something completely fresh and new. Sounds really, very similar to what Daisy Ridley is saying about a different direction. Uh, she would also reveal how the Ray film is also connected to James Mangold's origin of the Force film. She says it was something that Jim Mangold immediately sparked to, and I think it's a really nice compliment to what we're doing with moving into the future with Ray, and then understanding a bit more of where this all came from, because it will be at the heart of creating the new Jedi Order. So to get a real sense of where that might have began with the dawn of the Jedi could be a pretty cool. And as far as what this different direction will be, I don't think it's very different at all. We've seen this pretty much from the get-go with Kathleen Kennedy's Star Wars, because this is what Charmino Bay Chinoy told CNN. She says, I'm very thrilled about the project because I think that uh, I think what we are about to create is something very special. And we are in 2024 now, and I think it's about time we had a woman come forward forward to shape the story in a galaxy far, far away. So obviously implying that they're going to have a heavy dose of feminism when you're already promoting your project based on identity politics. I think it's safe to assume that, especially given the fact that we've seen them inject feminism into pretty much their entire franchise since Kathleen Kennedy took over uh, once the Walt Disney Company purchased Star Wars and Lucasfilm. We also had uh, Charmino Bay Chinoy say this to Vice News last year. She said, my name is Charmino Bay Chinoy and I'm directing the next Star Wars film. I'm excited about bringing Daisy Ridley back into the Star Wars galaxy and then telling her story. I'm excited to be immersed in the Jedi Academy. And I think there's so much excitement about or around the new Jedi Order. I've always kicked open doors that were previously closed. And I think my feeling is that there is that and I think my feeling is that there is that there is a critical mass of women who have begun to move forward in places that were previously closed to them. Again, hinting at how much feminism is going to be injected into it, using identity politics to promote the film. A critical mass of women who have begun to move forward in places that were previously closed to them. Uh, that is why she's excited about this film. It's just utterly ridiculous. It's not about, uh, I mean, I guess she talks about the story a little bit there, but then she immediately spins it into her identity politics. And then she said, and at the end a few years ago, I began to think about what I wanted to do. Miss Marvel was coming around and I thought about a brown Muslim superhero and what impact she would have on the way young girls see themselves. So obviously about indoctrinating the future generations through the storytelling that she is doing. Uh, I think that's very abundantly clear there. And, and then she says, and you know, my filmmaking and storytelling has always been about championing heroes, men and women who really go through extraordinary circumstances to create a better tomorrow. Uh, I question what her better tomorrow is. That sounds all great and good until you find out that her better tomorrow is feminism. And that is not a better tomorrow. That is a worse tomorrow. So uh, I don't, I'm not hopeful for what Star Wars, is, I'm not hopeful for Star Wars' future, uh, at least with this Ray film. 
I don't think they have anything going for it. I think it will be a massive, massive flop. Prop, maybe even worse than the Marvels film, which uh, hasn't even crossed the two hundred million dollar mark, despite having uh, a budget over two hundred and seventy four million that we know that is reported, and that doesn't even include the reshoots from twenty twenty three. So, uh, and what Daisy Ridley is saying here just kind of confirms everything we've already been hearing from Kathleen Kennedy, from Charmino Bechnoy, that this film is going to be an utter disaster. But those are my thoughts on the matter. Let me know what you guys think about this. What do you make of what Daisy Ridley had to say about the upcoming new Jedi Order film that she will be reprising her role as Rey in? Let me know in the comments below. And remember to always be charitable, but to always speak the truth.